JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 8th. I am Karla Mospissuros, senior market analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, le let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, all but one of the other G10 currencies on Monday during the Asian morning Tuesday. It gained the most uh, versus uh, the pound, SEC, CHF and NOC in that order, while it gained the least versus the Canadian dollar and the Aussie. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against uh, the yen. Now the strengthening of the US dollar and the Japanese yen suggests uh, that the markets traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday. Nonetheless, the weakening of the Swiss franc and the relative strength in the Aussie and the Canadian dollars point otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU indices were a sea of green, with the main gainer being the UK FTSE 100, perhaps uh, aided by the tumble in the British pound. Remember that many companies of uh, the index generate profits in other currencies, so in a weakening uh, GBP environment, if those profits are converted to pounds, they worth more. Wall Street was closed yesterday due to the Labor uh, Day holiday, while today in Asia the optimism uh, continued. Japan's Nikkei 225 and China Shanghai Composite gained uh, 0.81 and 0.90% respectively. EU shares bounced from, Wall Street, from a Wall Street-led uh, route in technology stocks in the previous week, perhaps as investors were encouraged to increase uh, their risk exposure due to more upbeat headlines with regards to a potential coronavirus vaccine. Yesterday, Australia's uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison said that his nation will buy about 85 million doses of two potential vaccines if trials uh, prove successful, reaching common ground with uh, with the biotech uh, firm uh, C CSL. The agreement was for CSL uh, to manufacture uh, two vaccines, one developed by AstraZeneca and Oxford University, and another one produced on CSL's uh, own labs with the University of uh, Queensland. All this adds to our view that the latest retreat in equities and uh, other risk-linked assets may have been a corrective phase before another leg of buying. With headlines over a potential vaccine uh, keep coming on uh, the bright side and expectations over fresh stimulus, especially by the ECB and the Fed, uh, we would uh, see decent chances for investors to continue increasing their risk, exp their risk exposures and abandon safe havens. Now back to the currencies, the British pound was the main loser coming under selling interest on fresh EU-UK tensions. On Sunday, reports hit the wires that the UK is planning new legislation that will override key parts of the Brexit withdrawal agreement, with the EU warning that there would be no deal if that happened. Today, both sides are scheduled to return to the negotiating table, with uh, both parties giving a self-imposed October deadline to find common ground. If they do, the deal will have to be ratified at an EU summit before the transition period expires. Remember that the transition period expires on December 31st. We already have had negative news with regards to the Brexit saga, with the UK, with the UK in doubling its uh, fishing quotas, something that was not likely to be agreed by the EU. The latest development over, developments over the withdrawal agreement lessen even further the likelihood of any progress being made this week, and as a consequence, the chances for a no-deal Brexit in the, in the end of this year are growing. In our view, this is likely to keep the pound under selling interest for a while more. 
conditional upon it covering the broader market, uh, even the broader investor morale, we would expect the British currency to lose the most ground against currencies which tend to get benefited during risk on periods, the likes of Aussie and the Kiwi. As for today's events, during the EU trading, Germany's trade balance for July and Eurozone's final GDP for the second quarter are coming out. Germany's trade surplus is expected to have increased somewhat, while the euro area final GDP is anticipated to confirm its second estimate of minus 12.1% quarter over quarter. As for tonight, during the, Asi during the Asian session on Wednesday, China's CPI and PPI for August are coming out. The CPI is forecast to have slowed to 2.4% year over year from 2.7%, while the PPI is anticipated to have fallen at a slower pace than in July. Specifically, it is expected to have slid 2% year over year after falling 2.4%. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.